in this war of machines. There may come a time when you find yourself face to face and hand to hand with your enemy. At these times, a knowledge of close combat will stand you in good stead. Not only may it get you out of a nasty situation, but most important of all, it may help you to defeat the enemy. First of all, there's no such thing as defense in close combat. It's attack or counterattack all the time. Secondly, don't be afraid of his weapons. Even if you have none yourself, you are not unarmed. You've got your hands and you've got your boots. Oh yes, I know it sounds all very well to talk about arms and legs against rifles and bayonets, but if you know how to use them, like Reed and Jackson did, you still have a very good chance of doing him down. Now, Reed and Jackson are here today to show you a few more tricks of the trade. And speaking of tricks, here's the most important point of all. Remember, war is not a game, and there are no rules. The Hun has been trained and taught to blot you out with any and every dirty trick he can think of. And he's got a dirty mind. So, in close combat, anything is fair if it enables you to get the better of your enemy. Now, Jackson is going to play the Hun, in spite of his good looks. <laughs> <laughs> when you come face to face with your enemy, you have to decide upon your method of attack. First, study your opponent. See how he's dressed, what sort of weapons he has, and in which hand he carries them. Is he right or left-handed? Does his helmet cover the back and sides of his neck? Does his coat or equipment prevent a really good kick at his fork? When you've summed him up, you'll know best how to act, but be quick about it, or he may act first. And finally, wear tricks. The Hun with his hands in the air is still dangerous. Now we come to some special blows and where to plot. The chin jab. A vigorous upward thrust at the chin with the heel of the hand, keeping the fingers spread and slightly bent. They may take effect on either his nose or his eyes. This is much more effective than a punch with the clenched fist. Edge of hand blow, or better known to some of you as the rabbit blow. Use the outer edge of either hand. Fingers fully stretched and close together. Strike at the throat, sides, or back of the neck. Now this one is called the shin stamp. Use his shin as a guide for the outer edge of your foot and stamp heavily on his instep. It's the stamp that really counts not the shin. The knee blow is very simple and effective. Just raise your knee sharply into his fork, stomach, or face, as may be most convenient. Boxing punch, used for three spots only. The throat, pit of the stomach, or the fork. Don't use it for the chin. The chin jab is more effective. Now for the kick. Just that, and nothing more. But deadly when used in the right places. Never used at a standing opponent who is on his guard. You'll see why later. But if he is partly down, kick at fork, stomach, or face. And if he is right down, the neck or kidneys. And don't forget, you've got a heel. Helmet blow. Remember that normally you should never take your helmet off. With one exception, which we'll come to later. But accidents happen, and it may fall off or get knocked off. If it does, and you can grab hold of it, you've got a very effective weapon. Hold it firmly with the fingers inside and the thumb on top of the brim, and strike with the edge at the fork, throat, or sides of the neck, back of the neck, or kidneys. So much for the blows. Now we come to a simple homemade weapon, the kosh. A bit of wood or a bit of metal about 15 inches long and about an inch in diameter, but best of all, a bit of insulated electric cable. Make a loop and pass it through the hole in the end of the cosh. Loop large enough to slip your hand in, but not too large so that it falls off. Cosh is a grand weapon. It leaves both hands free when not actually in use and is ready immediately when required, so it requires no great force to put your hand down for the count or for keeps. And if you should happen to strike too hard, well, what a pity. You'll have to go and look for another hunt. <laughs> so 
strike at the side of the neck, the throat, at the fork, or the back of the neck. That's that. Well, now for a bit of action. Reed and Jackson are going to show you how to employ the blows. First of all, how to tackle a man from behind. I expect you're wondering how it's done. Well, let's see it in slow time. Creep up silently. Fling one arm round his neck so as to bring your forearm hard into his throat. At the same time, knee him sharply in the backside or back of the legs with the opposite knee. Right arm round, left knee up. As he begins to topple, put your free hand over his mouth to keep him quiet. The moment he's down, strike with any of the blows. Sorry, Jack. <laughs> A word of caution. You can only hope to approach silently over grass, sand, or a smooth surface. You cannot expect to do it over gravel, debris, or broken ground. If you do make a noise and your opponent begins to turn, you must go on. A rug attack at the back of his knees. He's bound to go down and you jump on him and lay him out. Now what to do when you're attacked? You have no weapon and the hand comes at you with a rifle and bend. Don't shoot on the papers. Don't shoot. And this is how it's done. You have got to get close. So if he will not come to you, you must go to him. You must distract his attention in some way. Fling something at his face. Anything will do, even a packet of papers or your table. It takes him off his guard for a split second. Jump in at once and parry his bayonet outwards. Never inwards. Always outwards. Then go for the man. Strike with the edge of hand and follow with kicks or other blows. Now, how to deal with the man armed with a pistol? I've got my hands up. Don't shoot now. Sorry, Jack. Once again, you must get close. As soon as the pistol point is within a few inches of your tummy, keep your eye fixed on his and speak to him. Say anything. It doesn't matter what. He probably won't understand. The fact of speaking will distract his attention. The moment you are ready, swing round and sweep the pistol hand outwards with your nearest arm. If his pistol is in his right hand, your turn must be to your right, and your left arm used for the swing. Immediately you've struck the weapon clear, swing back using your other hand for chin jab, and then knee blow and kick it forward. Follow with other blows as necessary. Next we come the enemy armed with a knife. And here there are three distinct possibilities. First of all, he may come at you with a knife firmly in one hand, ready for an upward thrust. As the hand comes upward in the thrust, meet it with your opposite forearm to break the blow. Follow on as before. In this case, he approaches in a crouch, passing the knife from hand to hand so that you don't know which he is going to use for the thrust. This is the one time when you can remove your helmet. As he strikes, thrust the helmet onto his arm. Follow on at once. Lastly, if he is a complete novice, he may come holding the knife ready for a downward stroke. As he strikes downward, meet his forearm with your own edge of hand. At the same time, punch it tummy or chin jab. Then proceed as usual. Well now, Reed and Jackson are going to show you how to deal with an enemy who is armed with a kosh or truncheon. Same as for the man who strikes downward with a knife. Meet his forearm with your own edge of hand. At the same time, punch your tummy, followed by other kicks and blows. You may remember that early on, I told you never to kick at a standing opponent who was ready and waiting for you. This will show you why. First of all, a straightforward, violent kick. Oh! Now let's oh. see it in slow time. As he kicks, 
turn outwards and sweep his leg upwards. The stronger you sweep, the harder he falls. The second type of kick is the one where your opponent, as they say in boxing, telegraphs his intention. <laughs> now, in slow time, turn inwards and raise the near foot so that the outer edge of your boot meets his shin. So never kick at a standing enemy. It's too terribly easy to defeat. Just one other case. An enemy may approach and at the last moment think better of it. He must not get away. One on the deck is worth two on the run. Next we come to a few simple releases. First of all, held round the body from behind, outside or inside the arm. And here it is, slowed down. If you're wearing a helmet, jerk your head back sharply in the hope of striking him in the face. At the same time, claim one of his arms firmly with both hands and clasp it tight to your body. While you are doing this, place your corresponding leg, left arm, left leg, backwards, outside your opponent's foot. Keep the grasp on and turn your body sharply away from the backward leg. He's bound to go and you then proceed with the execution. Now, the man who attacks your throat with his forearm. Sorry, Jack. And here's the secret. Grasp his forearm firmly with both hands. At the same time, drop on the corresponding knee. Right arm, right knee. As your knee goes down, bend sharply forwards towards it. He must go either over your back or to one side. And you pounce on him and knock him out. Perhaps he grasps your throat with his hands. If so, grasp one finger of each hand, preferably the little finger. Bend it sharply outwards and upwards. Hold on tight, stoop forward and throw. Just a word of warning. In practicing, you cannot do the throw with the little fingers or they'll break. You must grip the wrist or the whole hand. Now here it is in quick time. When you've laid the enemy out, if you want to secure him as a prisoner, you should know how to toss him up. Take a piece of thin cord, telephone cable or electric flex, and secure his thumbs together behind his back. Don't put the thumbs together, secure one thumb first, and then make the other fast to it. Now bend one leg over, and place the ankle behind the knee of the other leg. Then bend that leg towards you and secure the ankle firmly and as close as possible to the thumbs. If you have no thin cord or wire and have to use rope or strap, you cannot tie his thumbs together. In that case, you must lash his wrists. Remember, the same rule applies. Make fast one wrist first and then secure the other to it. After that, you proceed with the ankles as before. If you still have spare end, Take a turn round his neck. All taut and secure. If after getting your man down, you wish to hold him down for a while, maybe you have no cord or rope, do it like this. Turn him face downwards. Sit astride the small of his back with your back towards his head. Put one ankle behind his other knee. Bend the leg back towards you and sit back holding onto the upper foot. If he gives any trouble, you just pull on that foot, and he'll soon back up. Lastly, we come to a problem which may easily confront any of us. How to march a prisoner, and what to do if you yourself are being marched away as a prisoner. In order to avoid any confusion in your minds, we'll take each case separately. Let us start with how to march a prisoner. First of all, if armed with a rifle and bayonet, This is the proper way to do it. Keep the point of your bayonet in line with his back, but never bring it nearer than two feet clear. If he won't get on, bring your rifle to the high port and use your boot like this. Now, why don't we prod him in the back with our point? You see? This time you have a pistol. If he won't get on, never poke your pistol into his back. Keep it well away from him. Grab his shoulder with your free hand and urge him on like this. 
Why don't we stick the pistol in his back? Here's why. If you have a knife, hold it ready for an upward thrust and never prick him in the back to get a move on. If he is stubborn, hold your knife well back, grasp him by the shoulder as before, and shove him along like this. Why don't we prick him on? Here's why. Jackson getting some of his own back now. With the cosh, grab the shoulder as before, and keep the cosh well back. Ready for this. If you hold it over his head, this will happen. You will note that in all those cases, the important thing is to keep your weapon ready for immediate use and well clear of the prisoner. Remember that, because now we're going to see what to do if the tables are turned and you are the prisoner. There are two things you must do. You must note very carefully in which hand your enemy is holding his weapon. And secondly, you must make him urge you on with it. Sorry, Sorry Jack. Uh, the moment you feel the bayonet point at your back, swing round. At the same time, beat your nearer arm downwards to parry the rifle outwards. Follow up with edge of hand blows and kicks. Here's what to do if your enemy has a pistol. The moment you feel the pistol point in your back, same action as before, swing the near arm down and knock the pistol outwards. Follow on, as before detailed. With the knife, the same rules apply. This time, see if you can describe the actions for yourselves. Point. And. And. We all know this bit. Learn to do the very simple movements you've just seen until you know them thoroughly and can do them at full speed in full equipment. Practice makes perfect. Call the front rank and stick him up. Go! Up hand, and boy, swing and swim! Now, kick, 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 and face move. The essentials of close combat our speed, determination, and ruthlessness. Go all out. As Shakespeare says, be bloody, bold, and resolute.